Oh, is that me? Yes, it is. Hi, you guys. My name is Duana M. Chandler, and I'm here to do the So Long for View B, the pants. These pants look so good with my leather jacket that I made. Look at this leather. Look at the leather. You see the leather? The leather top. Look at the pants with it. It looks good. I look cool. Don't not, didn't I look cool? Okay, if y'all have not seen, go to my Instagram at Duana underscore M underscore Chandler and look at my, my video of this outfit. Look at it. You guys, I look so cool. Look too cool for school, come on. <laughs> I cannot wait to share the fabric that I chose to make this so long with and it's, you're gonna love it. It's gonna be amazing. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, you guys, so here is the pattern. Let's take a look at the back. We are gonna be looking at view B. All right, so if you take a look at the back, you have the fabric suggestions at the top left. And then you also have the yardage, so you know how much fabric that you need for the pants. And lastly, at the bottom, I'm going to point out the finished garment measurements. I feel like this has been a great guide to make sure that I'm cutting the right size. All right, so let's see what fabric I chose. I chose denim. I love denim because you can literally wear it with anything and it's perfect for the fall. So then you're going to need a nine inch invisible zipper. And this is the one I have. All right, and this is some twill tape that I got. This is an inch wide. I usually get the half inch wide, but I really wanted to try something different. You're also gonna need a grommet kit and a hammer to apply the grommets. And last but not least, you cannot forget your lightweight fusible interfacing. All right, so let's take a look at our pieces. This is piece eight, the front of the pants, and you're gonna cut two of these. Just to note, this is where your pocket placement will be. And I also like to extend my pants because I have longer legs and this is where you do that. All right, the next piece is pattern piece number nine. This is the back of the pants and you're gonna cut two of these. Here's where the pocket placement goes. And again, I'm gonna be extending my pants so I will do it again right here. Next, we have pocket piece number 10. This is the pocket, and you're gonna cut two of these. Next, this is pattern piece number 11. This is the pocket flounce, and you're gonna cut four of these. All right, this is pattern piece number 12, the gusset, and you are gonna be cutting two of these. All right, this is pattern piece number 13, the front waistband. You're going to cut two of these and one with interfacing. All right, this is pattern piece number 14, the back waistband, and you're going to cut two of these and one on interfacing. Before you move on, you want to make sure that you make all your markings, especially the pocket placement. So what I like to do for the pocket placement is just pin all my markings for that. So wherever my dots are and where the pocket ends, that's a good place to mark. I use my chalk and I will just mark the first dot, right? Then remove that pin, add the pin to the next dot. Make a mark, and then you're gonna remove that pin, and there are no more dots here, so what you're gonna do is now you're gonna put pins at the round corner. And I like to do it this way just to show the accuracy of the pocket placement. Now that I have made all my marks, I'm just gonna trace. Do that for all the sides. So if you've done all your markings, you should also have your dart markings and you're gonna pin your dart just like that. And then you're gonna sew it starting from the raw edge towards the point. 
There's a trick I learned on how to sew darts so that you don't get dimpling at the bottom by the point. So I'm gonna show you here. So what you're gonna do as you're stitching your darts, you're gonna go closer to the edge. And once you hit the edge, you're gonna turn your fabric a little bit and sew as close to the edge as possible until you hit that point. You don't want to back stitch. You just want to pull out as much of the thread gently as possible and then you're going to just tie a knot. And this is what it should look like. Once you are done stitching the darts, you're going to stitch the front and backs together at the center front and then the center back above the notch. So this is what it should look like. And now you're going to take your front and back and you're going to pin the side together, just the right side. Once you're done pinning, now you're going to stitch it together. And also make sure after you have stitched your pieces together that you are also pressing your seams open. So now you're going to take your front and back waistband facings. These are the ones with the interfacing. You want to make sure that every area is marked. I also like to check my notches and make sure that they are still there. And I also like to mark them front and back just because they look so identical and I don't want to confuse them. So now you're going to pin the front and back pieces right sides together at the notched ends. And once you've done that, you can stitch them together. So now you're going to take your front and back waistband sections and you're going to also do the same by pinning them at the notched ends and then stitching them together. So now you're going to take your pants and waistband and you're going to pin at the notched ends matching centers and clipping where needed. All right, so once you're done pinning, you're going to baste stitch, trim around the edges, and then press the seam towards the waistband. Okay, so now it's time to apply the invisible zipper. All right, so when you apply the visible zipper, what I like to do is to press my zipper teeth open. I never use my iron on a hot, hot temperature. I kind of use it on a more um, warm temperature, but it helps to open up the teeth just a little bit, just like that. And that just makes it easier when I'm passing it through my invisible zipper foot. And this is not a requirement, but I have personally found it to be very helpful. And of course you don't want a really hot temperature because you don't want it to melt the zipper teeth. Um, so I would always check by zipping it back up just to make sure that it's still working fine. <laughs> Okay, so now it's time for the zipper application. You want to make sure your zipper is open. And on the outside, so the outside of the fabric, you're going to pin the right side of the zipper face down on the left front side opening edge. Make sure the coil is along the seam line, the tape is within the seam allowance, and the top stop is about one eighth below the upper seam line of the waistband. My rule when adding zippers is that usually my top stop is about the seam allowance's length away from the top. So if the seam allowance is 5 eighths of an inch, it's 5 eighths of an inch from the top raw edge. So we're going to stitch this together. So let's go on to our sewing machine. So notice that I have a special invisible zipper foot when stitching my invisible zipper. Yours might be a little different, just make sure you know the one for your sewing machine. All right, so once you've added that side of the zipper, now you're gonna close the zipper, and then you're going to pin the remaining zipper tape to the left back side opening edge, making sure the zipper teeth is on the seam line. So once you're done pinning, you're going to open up the zipper and you're going to do the same thing on this side using your sewing machine.
Don't forget to back stitch to reinforce. All right, so now you're gonna close the zipper and you can check that it is invisible from the outside. But now you're gonna take um, the free ends of the zipper tape away from the seam allowance. I like to mark where I'm going to do my stitch, which is going to be 1 4th inch above the lowest stitch and slightly to the left. And then I'm going to pin the remaining left side seam below the notch. Looking good. We're about halfway done. Okay, something to note that I didn't mention earlier is that you want to make sure that you turn in about half an inch on the lower edge of the facing. And then you're going to pin your facing to the waistband, right sides together, matching the seams and centers. So now you're going to stitch the upper edges once you're done pinning. You're going to trim and then understitch your facing. And yes, you will have some ends of the facing extending. So here I am understitching. I just like to make sure that my seam is facing towards the facing. All right, I'm going to stitch all the way through. And this is how it should look when I'm done. All right, so now I'm gonna turn my facing to the inside, turning in any ends of the facing to clear the zipper teeth because we don't wanna sew over our zipper teeth. Because the fabric I'm using is denim and it's a little thicker, I like to pin it down just to kind of keep it in place before I slip stitch. All right, so you're going to take a needle and thread and you're going to slip stitch. If you don't know what slip stitching is, it is just a type of stitch that appears invisible. So you're not really seeing the actual stitch, but it holds two pieces of fabric together. So I'm just going to slip stitch the ends over the zipper tape. Once I'm done that, I'm just going to press the edge over the seam of the inside. So because I pinned it, it is, I know that it's going to be in that place and then I can just press it right there to keep it in place. So now I'm going to take my pocket pieces and my gusset pieces and I'm going to make sure that my notches are there. Any dots that I have, I make sure it's there. Those are very important. And then I'm going to stay stitch along the notched edge of the gusset. All right, so now go ahead and turn under 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance on the long, unnotched edge of your gusset. Make sure you press it. All right, so I totally forgot to make my markings on my pocket, so I'm going to do those now. All right, but these are very important, so you want to make sure that you go back and do those. All right, so now you're going to match the notches of the gusset and the pocket. You're going to pin those together. Once you're done pinning those together, you're going to stitch them together. Do that for both. All right, and this is what it should look like. So now put those aside, and now we're going to take our pocket flounces, and we're going to stay stitch the notch edge of each pocket flounce. Okay, so out of those four pocket flounces, you are going to take two of those. Those will be your facings, and you're going to turn under the notched edge of those pocket flounce pieces. You're going to also clip to stay stitching as needed. Press it. Make sure you trim any pressed seam allowances to 3 eighths of an inch. So now you're going to pin the facing to the flounce right sides together, matching any symbols, any dots, and then you're going to stitch the upper and side edges. Trim and understitch facing as far as possible. This is a good time to also trim around your flounce just because you don't want it to be too bulky. All right, you're going to turn it right sides out. You can press it as well to just keep it nice and flat. And once you've done that, now you can apply your grommets. Depending on the grommet kit you get, you can use the tool to cut the hole or you can use a pair of scissors. I find the scissors way faster, so I'm going to use that. 
All right, so first thing, you're gonna get your grommet kit and you wanna take the side of the grommet that looks like a hat and you're gonna place it on the top of the fabric. And so this is gonna be the side that's gonna be showing. So then you're gonna pass it through the hole and then you're gonna take the side that looks like a washer and this is gonna be with the rounded side up. So the rounded side would be facing the opposite end. And you're gonna add that washer to the other side. So now you're gonna take the base. This is the part that looks like a tunnel. And you're gonna place the front side of the grommet face down on this base. Then you're gonna take the install tool and you're gonna place it right on top. So now you're gonna take your hammer. All right, so when using the hammer, you definitely want a really hard surface such as cement, but you're gonna apply a good amount of force by hitting the top of the install tool a few times. So now you're gonna take the flounce and you're gonna pin it to the upper edge of the pocket, matching any notches and symbols. You also wanna clip your flounce to the stay stitching just so it can flatten out that curve and so you can match your notches a lot better. Once you're done pinning, you're going to stitch between the small dots, keeping the gusset and the flounce facing free. You're gonna do that for both flounces. Now you're gonna trim it. You're gonna also turn the seam towards the flounce, just like I did here, and I've already pinned it. And so now you're gonna press it and then slip stitch the facing over the seam. Do that for both. So we're about to add the pockets to the pants. And once we are done that, we are about 95% done. So bear with me, we are almost there. All right, so you're gonna take your pants and you're gonna put it on a side where you can see the full pocket placement. So now you're gonna pin your pocket to the front and back over the side seam, matching any symbols, keeping the flounce free. So now you're gonna edge stitch the side and lower edges of the gusset below the small dots. The more pins, the better, just so you can make sure that you get it directly on the line. So as you're sewing, you're getting that placement in the right spot. So once you've edge stitched, you're going to make pleats in the pockets at the sides. You're gonna bring the small dots together and then you're gonna baste it, press it, and then you're gonna pin the side edges of the flounce in place over the gusset. All right, so here is a closer look at what it looks like. And now you're just gonna stitch along the edge. All right, so now you're gonna take your ties and then you're going to bring the ends of the ties out through the grommets and tie in a bow. Or you can tie it however you want and you can use whatever width tie that you wanna use. I use twill tape and this one specifically is one inch twill tape. And so you can tie it in a bow or in just a knot and then there you go. So now once we're done that, we're gonna tackle the inside of the leg of the pants. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna stitch the back and front together at the inner leg. And so you're gonna do that with both sides. All right, so you're gonna now slip the right leg into the left leg. All right, right sides together. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a minute to do that. And once you've done that, you're gonna pin the remaining of the crotch seam right sides together, matching any inner leg seams, and you're gonna stitch. All right, make sure you've stitched twice, the second one being one fourth inch away in seam allowance between the notches. Make sure you trim close to the second stitching. All right, so I'm gonna flip it over right sides out really quickly just to take a glimpse at it and just make sure it looks like how I want it to. And it's looking good. So now all we're gonna do is we're gonna finish it off by hemming the bottom of the pants. All right, so to hem, I'm gonna turn it right sides back out. All right, so to hem, you're gonna turn up the bottom of the pants. Now, because I surged it, I am going to avoid the one fourth inch turn that they asked in the instructions. And I'm just going to measure out one inch. I'm just gonna fold that. And then I'm going to baste it and then top stitch. 
And look at your pants, they are done. And you can apply a lot of the same techniques that we did here for the skirt, which is view C. So now let's take a look and see how I styled it. And there you have it, the final look of my pants, view B of ME2004. It looks so great. Thanks for watching my so long for view B of my Nomi pattern ME2004. Don't forget to tag me in your makes.